All right, well, thank you very much for coming out uh, on a cold, uh, blustery day, but we've got some exciting news to uh, share with you. Uh, I want to uh, thank you for uh, joining us today. I also want to recognize uh, Councilwoman Heather Hall, uh, Council Mayor Pro Tem Scott Wagner, and Councilwoman uh, Alicia Kennedy, who uh, are, came out and braved the elements with us as we talk about an important process that we do every year, which is the submittal of the uh, annual budget to, this, uh, to the City Council, and that public process will begin uh, today. So, wanted to um, uh, have an announcement out here uh, to, because we've got a lot of big ideas that are incorporated in the, into the city, upcoming city budget, and there's going to be a big announcement later on to, I think, dramatically transform uh, the perception of the east side uh, as we move forward. So, in 2014, uh, voters in Kansas City approved a charter change that uh, called for a more uh, collaborative budget process. And for the last couple of years, the mayor and I have been involved in that process and incorporated the uh, city council in that process through our five-year budget planning, our strategic planning process that the city council goes through uh, every year uh, for a five-year plan. So the budget that is submitted today is reflective of the city council's five-year business plan and I think moves, for, moves the city forward in a number of directions consistent with that plan. Uh, a couple of uh, the document, and I, I've, we've got our budget office uh, staff over there. Stick your hands up, guys, and wave. Uh, Hardworking folks who put in a lot of hours, weekends and evenings, trying to make it all come together, and they've done a nice job of, of building a document that I think the city can be proud of and that tells a story that we... Uh, want to share with, with not only the rest of Kansas City, but the nation as a whole. Uh, I mentioned the months of joint analysis and data-driven planning using our KC stat metrics and all the information we've been talking about for years about how to make services better on a daily basis. Uh, the key budget takeaway is the revenue um, uh, is the strongest we've seen in a decade, reflecting a very strong local economy. Uh, we hope that momentum continues and are anticipating that momentum will continue at least through April 30th of 2017, which is this budget period, May 1, 2016 to April 30th of 2017. So we're seeing good growth uh, in the economy, lots of strong um, uh, uh, job growth, lots of economic activity occurring in the city, and it's reflected in the numbers we were able to use in putting together the budget. And for the first time in years, as a result of that revenue growth, the submitted budget does not include significant reductions to operations. So gone are the days of having a hiring freeze or eliminating positions or doing reductions in force, what the city has done over the last few years to bring, to always balance its budget uh, and maintain good fiscal stewardship. We were able to actually for the first time in a long time, over a decade, start to reinvest in those basic services that people want and expect in Kansas City. And I think we have done a pretty good job of showing how well we're doing that with an augmentation as the economy goes, we can only get better in the, in the provision of those services. So uh, uh, the budget as a whole is talked about a planned expenditures of 1.53 billion. That's up about three and a half percent over last year's budget. It provides, again, consistent with our five-year business plan, an additional $1.2 million for the general fund reserves. So we continue to build our reserves, uh, build our rainy day fund, so that the next time the economic downturn happens, and it will inevitably happen, the city's in a better financial position to weather that storm. Uh, we have an enhancement to capital improvements of that 100 of that 1.5 billion. About 165 million of it is designated for capital improvements throughout the city, uh, both in the water and sewer system at the airport, and then throughout the infrastructure. Uh, throughout the city as a whole. So uh, a couple of points I want to make uh, sure we talk about. Uh, the budget includes uh, funds to support a staffing study uh, that will be jointly handled between the city and the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department to make sure that they are adequately staffed for their needs going forward. There's been some concern that we have inadequate staffing. This We want to do an independent stu study to validate where where the needs are and how the best way to provide uh, uniform police services will be addressed. And that's a cooperative effort between the city and the police department that will, that will start May 1 of 2016 and hopefully will guide future budgets as we move forward. Uh, we are also having incorporated, again, at the strong urging of Councilwoman Kennedy, there will be $250,000 in the budget to study how we can put more Kansas City, Missouri residents to work on city contracts. And so that process has started. 
uh, with a study group working at City Hall. We will now have to probably go out and get some formal data collection, some analysis. We are just completing our third generation disparity study. And so those dollars that we were using for, to complete the disparity study will now look at a workforce analysis going forward to make sure that the city as a whole is participating in this recovery, not just parts of the city, but as, as much as possible that jobs created by economic development activities in Kansas City are being made available to Kansas City, Missouri residents. You'll see more resources for code enforcement. You'll see more uh, resources for uh, neighborhood revitalization efforts, whether it be our, through our community development block grant or some of our basic issues. We're adding more money for uh, bulky item collection. We hear our residents tell us they wanted more uh, collections uh, more opportunities to provide bulky item, we're providing services. So there are additional code enforcement officers, there's more bulky item collection. We're also uh, recommending in this budget, and it's an internal issue, but we think it will greatly improve efficiency, is that the solid waste division, which was in the public works department, you saw them just working here, uh, beginning May 1, will become part of the neighborhoods department. So our code enforcement issues and our neighborhood abatement issues, our weed mowing and private lot maintenance, all of those issues will be consolidated in one department. We think it making it more efficient for us to provide those services um, across the city. Lastly, I want to talk about why we're here at 23rd and Chestnut is incorporated into this budget is a $10 million program to eliminate all of the dangerous buildings in the city. Currently there are about 800, that number fluctuates uh, on a daily basis as, pro as properties are torn down or, and other properties are added. We have been making progress over the last couple of years. If you go uh, basically west of Prospect, you won't find a lot of dangerous buildings. Uh, we've been working kind of a, uh, around kind of our target areas, investments in East Patrol, Northeast, along the Prospect Corridor to make sure that we were removing the dangerous buildings. But as you moved east of Prospect, which is where we're at today, this is where the concentration of the properties still remains. So over the next couple of years, our goal is to eliminate all of those dangerous buildings in the city of Kansas City. There's currently, I think, in, uh, Delana Taylor is somewhere. She's got a list if, you're, if you want to see it along with a map of about 775 uh, dangerous buildings. I should note that, and this is an important uh, reminder, is only about 200, less than 250 of them are publicly owned properties. The rest, over 500, are owned by private individuals, uh, LLCs, or out-of-state uh, folks who have abandoned their property. So, uh, and so we are, the End, end result of those properties. So as part of this issue, we're going to prioritize in eliminating the city-owned properties. And I want to point out that the city-owned properties, we didn't go out and acquire them to say, we want that house for some purpose. We got that house because the previous owner walked away from it. And it ended up in the land bank, which is what we now control. There's over 4,000 parcels in the city of Kansas City that we now have responsibility for. So as part of this issue, we're going to prioritize that those two vacant structures there will be one of the some of the first ones that go down but if you're a private owner and you're on that dangerous building list we're coming after you because the price of demolition that you will now have to pay if we have to tear it down just got more expensive so we're going to not only aggressively deal with the properties that we have inherited but we're going to aggressively go after the private owners and the out-of-state uh, companies, LLCs that are blighting our community. So this is just a warning for you folks out there uh, that uh, we're going to step up enforcement dramatically with these resources. I would also add that there has always been some concern that, well, instead of demolishing these buildings, is there an opportunity for them to be rehabbed? There is. Those two buildings are now for sale for $1. I'm serious. One dollar, and uh, if you rehab that and put somebody in there who will live in the building as, as an owner-occupied resident, the city, as part of this bond program, will rebate what would have cost us about eighty-five hundred dollars in demolition costs. We will rebate that to the to the owner at the the person who rehabs that house or buys that house and lives in it at the end of that environment. So, uh, so the city is saying, if you want these houses. And there's 250 on that list, 
the, the, the price starts at a dollar. So don't say we're trying to just knock these things down. If you want them, come and get them, but you gotta rehab them, bring them up to code compliance, and at the end of the process, the city will take the money it would have otherwise spent in demolition and give it back to the, uh, the rehabber. So again, we're trying to address all of the issues in this initiative. We think it's the, uh, the issue that we've been dealing with. We started this a couple years ago when we passed the park sales tax but we ran into a little fiscal difficulty. We've been able to do about 150 a year. We wanted to wipe out more, but we had to pay for our public safety pensions. And that took us a couple of years to absorb that cost. The economy's gotten stronger, now we can come back. We didn't forget about it. It's been our, our issue to work on for the last couple of years. Now that it's done, we've got public safety pensions uh, funded and adequately uh, funded going forward. We can now go back and make that investment needed to, to clean up the blight in the neighborhood. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce my cohort in crime on this project. He has been adequate, intimately involved in the budget preparations. Uh, a lot of Saturday mornings and evening and evenings sitting around uh, trying to figure out how to squeeze $10,000 here, $25,000 there to make the budget come together that is reflective of, of his priorities and the city council's priorities. So it's my great friend and my pleasure to introduce Mayor Sly James. Thank you, brother. Now, doesn't Troy look nice today? <laughs> I love the guy. But, you know, after all of that talk about the weather from an Iowa boy, after I was only then that I started to actually feel cold. Um, I want to thank Troy, and I want to thank everybody in the budget and finance departments because um, I don't think people often have a very good idea of what goes into putting these budgets together. This is a year-long process where people work on it every day, and as they're working on it, the data and the, sh and the sands are shifting underneath their feet. A couple of things I want to say uh, before I get into my actual remarks here is that when we got into office in 2011, it took us two years after that to get all of our housing stock out of receivership. It had been there for years before we got there. We finally got it out. We weren't able to do a lot of things with that housing until we got it out of receivership. And I want to thank the people who worked on it a lot, uh, Councilman Wagner, uh, Councilwoman Serco when she was the mayor pro tem, and, and I was there as well, and all of the people, John Woods and others in our legal department, working all the time on trying to get our housing stock out of receivership. That's one thing. Secondly, it took us a couple of years to work with the state legislature to get the land bank legis legislation that we needed in order to get our hands around the property. It didn't used to be this way. We had very little control over what was going on. We now have much more control, but it's kind of like what happens when, you, um, when, when the dog chases the bus. We caught the bus, now we're saying, okay, now what do we do with it? But I want to thank the state reps who helped us on that, the state senators who helped us on that, uh, Jolie Justice, and particularly Representative uh, at the time and Senator now uh, Holzman. But I want to thank Troy for all the hard work and his staff for all the hard work that they put into this budget that we're submitting to the City Council today. This budget is a financial blueprint for the city for the next year, but it's actually part of a five-year blueprint that we use and we update annually. Uh, inherent in this 400-page-plus book financial document is a plan for city government to try to address all of the expectations of our citizens as well as we possibly can. Uh, the document is based on our five-year financial and business plan. Uh, it's updated annually so that we know what citizens want and we can make adjustments as we go forward. And we also want to make adjustments to what the city actually needs. And sometimes those things are divergent. Uh, while this budget will get intense scrutiny for the next several weeks, it's important to remind everyone that putting it together is a year-round process that requires data and information year-round. And that's why we hold meetings with citizens each fall to get input. That's why we conduct our annual citizen satisfaction survey every quarter to get input. That's why we track 311 calls and use the data identified there to get input. And one thing that we've learned from all of this input and something that's been a priority of mine since taking office five years ago and working with Troy five years ago, and I can tell you that before I ever got into office, the first conversation that I had was with Troy at a restaurant and I talked to him about a plan that he had been wanting to do for a long time and had never had the ability to do, and still we don't, and that's to take six to ten square blocks of a city in one fell swoop and totally transform it. That's what we would love to be able to do. Unfortunately, we still don't have the resources necessary, but we're working on it. 
And I know one other thing that we've learned from the input, and that is if citizens in Kansas City expect nothing else, they expect us to take care of our neighborhoods and where they work and live. Uh, this budget does that. The city manager and I are fully committed uh, to a major two-year initiative to clean up neighborhoods with regards to dangerous buildings by demolishing those buildings and making the other buildings for sale to people who want to come in and rehab. Now, we, we, when we last did the demol demolition, we took down 100 buildings in the urban neighborhood initiative area, and in the process of doing that, we heard two things. Thanks for taking down the dangerous buildings, and why in the heck are you taking down these buildings? So we're offering people a choice now. You don't want the building to come down? It's for sale. Buck, come get it. And then you can get 850 or 1,500 bucks more if you can get it renovated and put some people in it to live there. And that's what we'd really like to see. Uh, we know that there's sh some houses in good enough shape to do that. We hope people uh, will step up and do it so that we can get those off the rolls as well and, in and then strengthen the neighborhoods in which those houses exist. Um, this initiative is a step towards addressing a major citizen's priority, and that is to get rid of the dangerous structures in the building. And like I said in October, Kansas City is a city that never quits, and we haven't quit on this. We're continuing to clean up our neighborhood so there will be places where people can stay and live and work, and we want to continue to do the things that we've been trying to do at Beacon Hill, uh, the new housing at Seven Oaks, uh, the renovation of the neighborhood, the turnaround of the the neighborhood over by Modest Miles Church with the police station and the uh, lab and the Modest Miles uh, work on his community center. And right down the street, the fact that we are, are purchasing the Limwood Shopping Center to turn that around and the housing projects we've got going on on the colonnades and all over this city. We have hundreds of millions of dollars of work going on on the east side of town. It doesn't always look like it unless you're standing and you're driving around and going to all the places, but it's there. And it's going to continue. And in fact, I can tell you it is more work going on now than has ever gone on at any single time on the east side. And we're proud of that. And we're going to continue to do that. So I, I want to just tell you that these things would not happen if it wasn't for the fact that we have a city manager who is absolutely, constantly, and completely dedicated to doing the right thing and saying yes. The only problem we sometimes have with him is he says yes to everything. <laughs> But he says yes because he wants to move this city forward, and he's taken that approach just about every time. Anybody who's worked with him knows that Troy Schulte is a man who likes to get things done. We're happy to have him, we're honored to have him, and we're blessed to have him as our city manager. But with all of that being said, I want to invite Mayor Pro Tim up. Come on up. He's the only one smart enough to wear a coat. Well, before, and we want to. Before that, do we do that? Yeah. Ah. It's all yours. It's all mine. <laughs> Thank this you. is our budget, and now it's yours to get through the council, and we'll be working with you and doing all those things necessary. But thank you all for, for being here. Spread the news about what we're doing in this city and where we're doing it in this city. We get a lot of noise about what we're not doing. We don't get a whole lot of conversation about all the stuff that we are doing. And let me tell you, we're doing as much as we can with the resources we have, and we want people to know that, and we want them to help us get it done. It's all yours, buddy. All right, all right. It's very weighty, just so you know. Um, I want to just say a few, a couple of short words um, about the process now. But before I do, as a former neighborhood president, I have to recognize the neighborhood president here, Marlon Hammonds. Thank you for having us here in Washington, Wheatley. Uh, we appreciate your hospitality. I don't know if you have uh, punch and cookies after. No, you don't. That's OK. <laughs> it's all right. No, thank you for having us here this morning. Um, now that we have the budget in hand, uh, there are many opportunities now for residents to provide their feedback regarding the submitted budget. And we have a number of opportunities, uh, three of them online. So you can go to KCMO or excuse me, KCMomentum.org. You can go to budget.kcmo.gov. And here's the long one of the day, kansas-city-mo.abalancingact.com. And I especially like that one because if you want to play with our budget, you can play with our budget. And you can look at how hard it is to change things 
and, and it's an excellent exercise, and we take that information, our budget department takes all of that information to help us as we move along. There are also three opportunities for the public to come to, to meetings, Saturday, February the 20th at the Kansas City Police Department's Regional Police Academy, Saturday, February the 27th at the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department's East Patrol at the Leon Jordan campus, and also Wednesday, or excuse me, Saturday, March the 5th, at the Hillcrest Community Center. All three of those meetings will be from 10 a.m. to noon. People can come forward. They can give uh, the council uh, their thoughts and opinions on our budget. You can also, on Tuesday, March the 1st, participate in a live budget Twitter chat from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. And you can go at KCMO or by email at kcmosocial at kcmo.org. And then, of course, there are opportunities to come in front of our finance committee, of which I chair. And the, the, the one that I suggest anyone who's interested can come to is Wednesday, March the 2nd. We'll meet on the 10th floor of City Hall at 8.30 a.m. So there are lots of opportunities for feedback. We welcome that feedback. We hope that what people hear and learn from today's announcement will be right, the, right to the sort of things they want to see the city do. But if it's not, or if you want to see something else, or if you want more of this, uh, then, I, uh, then you certainly have that opportunity to come forward and make those thoughts known. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to the city manager. And again, thanks for attending. Thanks for the book. <laughs> that kind of wraps up our uh, conversation. We're happy to take any questions. I do want to recognize while I've got them here, uh, if you want more specific questions uh, from a, some of our staff who uh, live and breathe this work every day. Ted Anderson uh, is the director of our Kansas City, Missouri Land Bank. And next to, hi next to him is Delana Taylor, and she runs our Preservation Division of Neighborhood and Housing Services. And next to her is John Wood, who John Wood, who is our director of neighborhood and housing services. And then over here in the hat with the uh, sinister looking sunglasses is Shockey Franciscus, and he's the guy that actually tears these things down. So uh, they're all available for uh, questions or further information. We have maps, we have lists of the dangerous buildings. If you want those, uh, we'll be happy to provide them. And again, we're happy to answer any questions you may have. One thing before we get to questions that I think Troy and I both want to make sure of is that we want to thank Kissick Construction, uh, who voluntarily I'm sorry, we want to thank Kissick Construction who voluntarily demolished a number of houses, ten. At 10 houses, no charge to the city, did it on their own dime and on their own time. Uh, we welcomed uh, that assistance and help. We'll welcome further assistance and help from Kissick and anybody else who wants to join them in this endeavor so that we can take care of these uh, buildings and houses that need to come down.